So, today we're going to dive into an international school competition that has a pretty interesting name, the Bibras Computing Challenge. If you've ever heard of it and wondered what it's all about, well, you've come to the right place. Okay, let's just get right to it. What on earth do beavers have to do with computers? I know, it sounds like the start of a bad joke, but the answer actually gets to the very heart of what this whole challenge is about. And here it is. Bibris is actually the Lithuanian word for beaver. See, the challenge started in Lithuania way back in 2004, and the founders chose the beaver to represent the core values they wanted to instill, intelligence, persistence, and teamwork. And it makes sense, right? Beavers are like nature's engineers. They're always working together, super persistent, building these complex things. It's a perfect metaphor. So, at its core, Bibris is this huge international competition for students from six years old all the way up to 18. But here's the thing. Its main goal isn't really to find the next coding superstar. It's to promote something way more fundamental called computational thinking. And that is a skill that literally everyone can use. Which brings us to our first big section. And this is the most important part to get. Bieber's isn't about writing code, not at all. It's about building up that mental toolkit, the thinking skills that help you become a great problem solver. So let's break down exactly what those skills are. First up is algorithmic thinking. It sounds a little technical, but it's really just a fancy way of saying you can create a clear step-by-step -step recipe to solve a problem. You know, like when you're putting together IKEA furniture or giving a friend directions, you need a logical sequence of steps. That's all this is. Then you've got decomposition. Think about it. When you're staring at a massive, overwhelming task, what do you do? You break it down. Decomposition is just the art of taking a huge problem and slicing it into smaller, bite-sized pieces that you can actually handle one at a time. It's Project Management 101. Okay, now this next one, abstraction, is a real superpower. It's the ability to look at a super complex situation, filter out all the noise and all the details that don't matter, and just focus on the essential information you need to solve the problem. The classic example is a subway map. It gets rid of all the streets and buildings to show you only what you need, the lines and the stations. That's abstraction in action. And of course, we can't talk about this without mentioning pattern recognition. This is what our brains do naturally. We see connections, we spot trends, we notice when we've seen a similar problem before. Being able to identify these patterns helps us solve new puzzles way faster and more efficiently. And finally, wrapping it all up, we have logical reasoning. This is the bedrock of making good decisions. It's all about using facts, evidence, and a really structured thought process to reach a conclusion you can actually defend. No guessing, just pure, solid logic. So if you take just one thing away from this section, please let it be this. The goal isn't coding, it's thinking. These five skills we just talked about, that's the real prize you get from doing the Bieber's Challenge. Okay, so now that we know why this challenge exists, let's get into the nitty gritty of how it actually works. Like, what does it look like for a student who's about to take the test? So if we look at the UK secondary school version, students get somewhere between 15 and 18 interactive tasks, and they have about 45 minutes to do them. The questions are split into easy, medium, and hard, but the scoring is what's really interesting. You get six points if you're right, zero if you skip it, but you actually lose two points if you get it wrong. Yeah, let's just park on that number for a second. Minus two. This isn't just the organizers being mean. That penalty for an incorrect answer is a really clever design choice. It's there to stop you from just randomly guessing. It forces you to actually think and be confident in your answer before you commit. It's all about rewarding thoughtful problem solving. The whole thing usually plays out in two parts. First, there's a practice session. This is super low pressure. It's just about getting used to the format and building some confidence. Then comes the real challenge. This one's the real deal, under timed conditions, and the results from this are what count towards your score and your national ranking. But what happens after the challenge is over, after you get that score? Well, this leads us to one of the most powerful parts of Bibras. The whole point is to use the results for growth, not just as another grade to stick on a report card. For the students themselves, the benefits are huge. The results give them a really clear picture of what their personal strengths are. It's not just a number. It's like a roadmap showing them where they shine and maybe where they could improve. This builds self-awareness, it builds motivation, and it's fantastic preparation for things like GCSE computer science. And hey, it's not just for the kids. For teachers, the results are an absolute gold mine of data. They can see trends across their whole class, spot common mistakes or misconceptions, 
and then adjust their teaching to help fix those specific things. It's an amazing assessment tool that makes them even better at their jobs. So how do you actually make that happen? Well, it's a pretty simple three-step reflection process. First, the students log their scores. Second, they take a minute to think about what was easy, what was hard, and what strategies actually worked for them. And third, the teacher looks at all that data and uses it to plan future lessons. It creates this fantastic feedback loop for learning. Now, a challenge like this is only really great if everyone can take part. And that's why accessibility is such a huge focus, making sure that Bieber's really is a tool for every single learner. One of the best features hands down is the built-in text-to-speech reader. This is a game changer. It means students who might struggle with reading, maybe because of dyslexia or because English isn't their first language, are not at a disadvantage. It makes sure the test is measuring the thinking skills, not how fast they can read. And the best part? Turning it on is so, so simple. You just have to use the Microsoft Edge browser. Once the test is up, you hit a simple keyboard shortcut, Control plus Shift plus U. That's it. The browser will start reading the text out loud, and students can even adjust the voice and the speed to what works for them. So just burn this into your memory. C-T-R-L plus Shift plus U. It's a tiny little technical detail that makes a massive difference in making sure the challenge is fair and inclusive for everybody. All right, let's do a super quick recap of the key takeaways. Number one, Bibras is all about building those core thinking skills, not coding skills. Two, the goal is thoughtful problem solving, not just guessing. Three, the results are an incredible tool for both student and teacher growth. And four, accessibility is baked right in to support every learner. And that leaves us with one final big question that really gets to the soul of the Bieber's philosophy. If the main goal of something like this is growth, not just winning or getting the top score, how does that change the way we should be approaching learning in general? Definitely something to think about. Thanks so much for tuning in.